Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review Cold Welcome by Elizabeth Moon. This is a military science fiction book and it's the first in a new series called Vada's Peace, which takes place after the first series about Kailara Vada called Vada's War. I read the first series, Vada's War, back in 2015, and it was excellent. It was amazing. And the first book in that series, Trading in Danger, was one of my favorite books of 2015. And I have been eagerly looking forward to more science fiction by Elizabeth Moon. And so I was super excited when, after about a decade, she is back writing about my favorite character of hers, Kailara Vada. Now, because Cold Welcome takes place after the first series and is very closely linked with the events and the fallout from those books, it's difficult to maybe talk about this book without perhaps spoiling the Vada's War series. So if you haven't read those books and you definitely don't want to know anything about what happened, then maybe don't watch this review so much. The quick and dirty version is that our main character, Kailara Vada, is a member of the Vada family, which runs an interstellar trading corporation. They are very rich and very powerful, especially on their home planet, Slaughter Key. In the first book, Trading in Danger, Kai is in Military Academy and she gets kicked out after becoming embroiled in a scandal involving her trying to help another student who had religious problems. When she gets kicked out, her family sends her off planet on one of their trading ships to get her away and involved in something else. Unfortunately, the family's enterprises are attacked, many members of their family are assassinated, and somebody is also um, like attacking and taking over the Interstellar Communications Corporation, which runs the ansibles that allow everybody to talk to each other. Kai rises to become a brilliant strategist and an admiral in an ad hoc force that she puts together called the SDF, which helps win this war and secure all the planets again, and helps also to rebuild her family's enterprise. I believe that Cold Welcome opens up a year or two after the end of the first series. Kai is definitely the admiral of the SDF and is dealing more with paperwork and questions of succession who will come after her in leading the SDF. And she has a relationship with Rafe, who is from the ISC, the corporation that runs the Ansibles. Things seem to be going pretty well at this point. And then Kai is asked by her Aunt Grace to return home to Slaughter Key, where she's going to turn over her shares of the Vada family's enterprises to her cousin Stella, who is going to become the new president of the company. So Kai comes, and then while she's taking a shuttle down to the planet, it is sabotaged, and she and about two dozen other survivors crash land in the ocean. At its heart, Cold Welcome is a survival story, which I really enjoy. Kai and this group of roughly two dozen people have to survive being on rafts out in the ocean in a pretty polar region with winter coming on. It's incredibly bad conditions. Their rafts and survival gear have also been sabotaged, so they don't have communications equipment or cold weather gear, so they are really at the mercy of the elements. Eventually, they manage to land on a kind of large island or small continent called Mixland, which is when things go into high gear with danger, because not only are they trying to survive through the winter in inhospitable conditions, Mixland holds a secret that they are about to discover, and the people who have, let's say, something there are going to come and try to kill them rather than rescue them. I enjoy reading about Kai so much because she is a natural-born leader. She also happens to be a natural-born killer, both strategically as an admiral and in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think this is supposed to be one of her weaknesses, that because she enjoys killing or gets some sort of thrill out of it, that you're supposed to be repulsed by her character in some way. And other characters maybe are, but it's also a trait that, at least in her family and in her profession, is kind of useful. I also love reading about Kai and some of the other characters in this series and in Cold Welcome because they are capable. They do their jobs really well, and I get a thrill out of people just doing things capably, of taking charge in a situation, thinking things through, and then executing on them. Kai, in particular, has to take command of a group of people who aren't actually in her chain of command. They're slaughter key people, not from her SDF forces. So she's not technically their commander, but she is a senior official, basically. And so she has to manage these people and not only help them survive physically, but also psychologically. And she has to think about the group dynamics 
as well as just finding shelter and food and staying alive until forces come to save them. I enjoyed this book so much because it seemed to pick up right where Moon left off with the last book in the first series. The characters are still very much themselves. There aren't any fundamental character shifts. Everybody sounds like they should. Everybody's behaving like they should. And the world also feels the same. One of the pieces of the mystery in Cold Welcome, as well as a, a large question posed for the rest of the series, is who came before? The survivors end up on this large island called Mixland, which everybody on Slaughter Key has been taught is a terraforming failure, that nothing is there, that is inhospitable to life, and that you just don't go there, you don't wonder what is there. But actually, there is something there, and nobody seems to know or remember who put it there. And I love this question because we're finally asking questions about what came before. My initial assumption about this entire world is that all of the planets had been terraformed slowly as this exodus of humans came out from Earth. But this doesn't actually seem to be the case. The people on Slaughter Key didn't themselves terraform the planet. Somebody did it before and they just discovered it and colonized it. That's what it sounds like at least. So talking about mysterious installations and bases and technology that isn't in human language and stuff, I am eating this up. There are a couple of nitpicky comments I'm going to make about this as well because while I thought it was a very good book and I do recommend it, it had a few flaws. The first is that the ending, the conclusion to Kai's survival story felt a little bit abrupt. When that final thing happened, I was like, that's it. Okay, can we talk a bit more about like the post-mortem of what happened, characters being debriefed or whatever, and we didn't get that. My other comment, the other little flaw, is perhaps structural or in that maybe Moon wasn't quite sure who she was writing the book to, people who have already read the first series and know what happened, or people who are starting here and haven't read the first series. Because the first chapter is very info dumpy, and I was fine with that because, you know, I wanted to be reminded of some things too, it, it brought back some memories, but it was very much recapping what had come before. And then later in the book, it just seems to abandon all pretense of trying to remind the reader or explaining things to a new reader. For example, there's this quick conversation where a character named Hal is mentioned, and clearly what happened between him and Kai, perhaps back at Military Academy, is important, and I couldn't remember it, but there was no explanation of it either, and I expected there to be more explanations like that throughout the book when there are calls back because the stuff doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't remember it either. Despite those two things, I think this book actually achieves a pretty tricky thing, which is to bridge the gap between two series, as well as being a setup novel for the next series without feeling like just a setup novel. Sometimes I'm okay when the first book in a series feels like all setup. Sometimes it just works. But I didn't want this book to feel like that, and I was really happy that it is itself a story and a pretty compelling compelling and interesting story as it is, as well as being, by the end, pretty massively shifting things around and setting up a new situation that the rest of this second series will deal with. So overall, I was pretty darn thrilled with this book. My initial expectations were pretty low. I was trying to minimize my expectations because I initially thought this was going to be a one-off, a standalone novel, returning back to the world for one last story, and I just didn't know how good it was going to be. Sometimes that kind of thing can backfire. Sometimes I would prefer a world and a series to just be left alone, to stand alone, and not be dragged out with maybe a subpar story later on. But this is definitely not that case. I'm also happy that it's the beginning of a new series because it is very strong and now I expect later books to be just as good as well. And hopefully I don't have to wait very long. I'm really hoping the next book will come out in 2018. 
That is everything I have to say about Cold Welcome by Elizabeth Moon. This book made me very, very happy. If you have read Cold Welcome or maybe the first series about Kailara Vada, I would love to hear from you. Comment down below and let me know what you thought. And thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.